Hi everybody, Rachel here, Treehouse Knits, episode 50. We made it to 50. I can't believe we made it to 50. This is awesome. And what a great episode for our 50. I'm going to use this episode to share with you a travelogue of sorts from my trip to Norway. If you're a longtime viewer or if you just viewed the last episode, you'll know that I spent 11 days in Norway on a fiber retreat. It was called a fiber retreat. I'd call it more of a fiber expedition. It was incredible. There was not a lot of retreating. It was a lot of learning about various sheep breeds in Norway, seeing them, touching the yarns, meeting the people who touch those yarns at various points in the yarn process from sheep to skein, just being inspired by other makers from around the world that um, have the same love of fiber that you do. It was incredible, all around incredible. Best vacation ever. <laughs> A special thanks to the Borshog Herigard, Herigord, that is the um, hotel that we stayed at for the retreat. They were incredible. I will have a link down below if you ever find yourself in Orkinger or outside of Trondheim and uh, or want to be part of the festival that takes place there. I The, the hotel people were amazing. Of course, I want to thank the Mid-Norsk Stricke Festival people. They are the organization that puts on these events and uh, welcomed us with open arms, shared with us their time, their food, their love of fiber, and especially want to thank Patricia right up front. Patricia P4 Chen on uh, YouTube and on Instagram. She was the individual that rallied us all together, got everything organized, <sighs> went above and beyond our expectations to create just a magical fibery event. So let me just get those thank yous out in the open in the beginning. I think how I will do this is I will share with you my finished objects that I uh, finished while I was in Norway or right when I got back, I finished a few things. And then we'll just kind of go through the itinerary in terms of locations we went and I'll share with you the different things that I purchased or I was given and just share a little bit of information. So it'll be a little bit travelogue, a little bit of information, history. We'll just kind of see where it goes. And uh, so that'll be the podcast today. I also received a couple of stitchy things in the mail that I want to share with you. I started a couple of new cross stitch uh, patterns and I'm part of a make along there. So I'll share that with you too. So I hope that sounds good. Why don't we just jump right in and get started with my first finished object of the trip. I think I talked about this on the last episode. This was a kit Actually, all the color yarns were a kit from Tidal Yarns that I got two years ago at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, Rhinebeck. And while I love the hat that they um, had a pattern for, I wanted something maybe just a little bit warmer for me here in Michigan. And I had this particular yarn. It's from Freshwater Fiber here in um I think it's mostly central on the west side of our state of Michigan. I'm coming from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, they uh, coordinated 15 shepherds and shepherdesses to come uh, take all their wool together and create this um, beautiful fiber. It's gorgeous. It's 50-50 alpaca. That is the color that, um, that's the natural color. And I thought it would be great for a double thick band for the hat. I love how it turned out. I don't think I'm going to do a tassel or a pom-pom or anything, but these are all naturally dyed colors from Tidal Yarn, and uh, I think the color way, the different colors that they selected for this kit is amazing. So I got that done. I actually started it on the trip, and this was great mindless knitting as I got to meet all of the other makers that came along on the trip. We had I think six of us from the U.S., a few from England, a couple from Sweden, um, or one from Sweden, a couple from Switzerland, uh, Shetland. We were from all around the knitting world, so I loved getting to know everybody while I was knitting on this brim part. Then I started the color part, and I was holding that yarn double, and I shouldn't have, so I ended up ripping back from about here and then completing the um all the way to the top so this is my my finished object souvenir from norway and i i absolutely love how it turned out and love all the stitches that i made in here 
were made when I was getting to know my new international friends that uh, were with me on this amazing tour. The other project that I brought along, which ended up being kind of interesting. So I started, this is Anne's Flowers by Venke Rold. I uh, knit this mitten about two and a half years ago when I just started knitting uh, Selbu, or knitting color work mittens, I should say. I knit, uh, this is my second pair that I ever knit, and then I got carried away with other patterns and I set this one aside. So I thought I would finish this year the other mitten. So that's what I worked on when we were in Norway, a little bit on the plane, and when I got back home. When I finished, I went and grabbed the other mitten. And look what happened two years later, two and a half years later. <laughs> My gauge is completely different. This is the one two years ago. This is now. Uh, it's real, folks. You get a little looser as you become more comfortable. So, again, I will use this. I'm not going to rip this out. I will definitely use this as a teaching moment in any of my color work classes I do going forward. And while I'm leaning back and seeing this, I had to wear one more time this amazing pin that Patricia created for all of us, this name badge. And that logo on there is the logo of the hotel that we stayed at for the retreat. It was the little touches like this that were just incredible throughout the retreat. So I had to wear it one last time for the podcast for you guys. So anyway, I knit this out of Rauma Tumi, which is a 50-50 alpaca wool. I really like Tumi a lot, but man, what a difference two years makes. I'm just going to put them side by side. Yeah, kind of crazy. Okay, so those are my finished objects from the last time we met. So let's talk a little bit about the trip. One of the first places that we ended up uh, going to was the Selbu Museum. It was a magical trip to the Selbu Museum. I'm gonna use the word magical a lot because it did feel very magical. We were, I at one point called it the Disney World for knitters, the whole experience, because you know, you go to Disney and you just exceeded, your expectations are exceeded. That's how I felt on this trip. But we boarded the bus to go to Selbu, and this was just a, a smaller group of us that arrived earlier for the retreat. Uh, we arrived a few days early to spend time in Trondheim and to see some sights. And the Selby Museum was a highlight for me. The trip there was snowy and beautiful. Our driver was wonderful navigating the snow. We got to Selbu, and the museum, uh, the curator there, Solvig, uh, welcomed us and ushered us into this beautiful room with a big, with two big tables, wooden tables. And even the ceiling was painted gorgeous. It was just a beautiful, beautiful building, old building. And all around were the mittens. It was just gorgeous to see the mittens and the various rooms talked about the history of how this particular community um, how the Selbu mitten was born uh, by a young woman who knit them for the first time, wore them to church, and everyone loved them so much. And then they determined that it would be a good moneymaker for the community, and it really kept them uh, out of poverty. Uh, everyone in the village, all the women and children, were knitting these uh, mittens, these Selbu mittens, and selling them. And there's just such a neat history. It's a knitting history that community has. I also loved seeing some of the old knitting machines in the building, some of the old knitting tools. It was just amazing. If you're someone who loves fiber, who loves antiques, who loves history, who loves knitting color work mittens, this is like the place. So some of you might not even know what a Selbu mitten is. When we went to the Husfliden in Trondheim, that was actually the next day, I'm jumping ahead just so you can see, we were gifted a pair, each one of us, of hand-knit Selbu mittens from the Husfliden. And these are the mittens that they were hand-knit for me. So these are Selbu mittens. They're characterized by the sharp point at the top and um, the motifs and the way that the 
thumbs are knit with this gusset that comes up on the back and this particular cuff is the woman's cuff the traditional woman's cuff it's knit in the traditional colors of the black and the white and i don't think i've ever had anyone maybe when i was a little baby somebody knit for me a pair of mittens i think probably they did but this is really my first pair of mittens that someone has knit for me. So that's the Selbu mitten. Th these different styles were all around the museum and um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful event. So back to the museum. I'll talk more about the Hoosfleden later. They had a tiny little Hoosfleden at the museum. Hoosfleden means house proud, I believe. And it's really a place that everything that you would need as a woman, I guess, of your home, they sell there to make your house a home. And of course, they have yarn there. And that's where I picked up my first Norwegian skeins. I picked up these skeins. This is a bulky weight called Troll, and it's by Hillsvog. It is 100% Norwegian wool, and I thought that these colors just look really pretty together. I love this peachy pink color. It's called Rose, I believe. But the, this was my first woolly purchase, and I was thinking right away of a hat, maybe with the Selbu, uh, Selbu stars or Selbu rose at the top. We should see. They also had some really cute gift ideas or gift items from their makers. I picked up this Selbu mitten mouse pad. <laughs> Did you think I got another pair of Selbu mittens? It's actually a mouse pad. I thought it was very cute. And I picked up some ribbon. Everywhere we went, there happened to be some ribbon. And I picked up this for the insides of a sweater or just trim for other items. So that was the Selbu, Mu Selbu Museum. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. Another place that we headed to the next morning was the Husleden in Trondheim. We um, met a couple more of our retreat guests at the Husleden, and I went right to, we, first of all, we had an amazing welcome at the Husleden. They had coffee and pastries for us and allowed us to come in an hour before the shop opened. And I headed right to the Husleden not who's Fleden, the, um, I headed right to the Hillsvog area and I knew I wanted to do some sort of green sweater. So I got it in Solia. I think that's how you say it. That's the fingering weight. And I was just kind of pulling colors that I thought would be fun together. I, I know I want to do some sort of color work sweater. So I got a little bit of gray in there and then I really liked this green in there. I thought that would be fun. And as I was looking at more colors, I thought, well, why don't I pick up this beautiful red? Because that would be a really cool, maybe Christmas vest or a Christmas sweater, maybe the flea cardigan in Christmas colors. So that's what I've got for now. And I plan on doing some sort of sweater with that or a sweater vest. Oh, I got and then I also picked up, actually I held the wrong color. This was the green for the sweater. This is actually a green for, it's called Fjord. Again, it's Hillsvog. And it is their sock yarn, sock yarn too. It's a 80-20 Norsk wool, which is Norwegian wool, 80%, 20% nylon. So I thought that would be a fun color for some socks. Uh, I was so tempted while I was there to pick up uh, one of the Roros blankets, the wool felted blankets, and I still might order one of those at some point. We also got a tour of the upstairs, which is where they make all of the bunads for the young ladies as they get older. Most young ladies in Norway will get a bunad, which is the traditional dress of their native area. And that was fascinating to see the, the sewists there. Uh, working on the boonads, all of the different embroideries and stitches on things. It was it's quite a piece of artwork when that is finished. That was pretty interesting too. In the afternoon, we ended up going to the Selbu Spinnery. That was also a blast. 
Um, the ride there was beautiful. We were in, I would say it was kind of like we were, we kept climbing, going higher and higher into the mountains, but there were these flat plains. So that were just snow covered. It was just gorgeous. All these little farms dotted throughout the countryside and they were all painted in either red or a gold or a white color. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. So at the Selbu Spinnery, we got a tour by Ingvild and she was so, I have to find her stuff. This is a spinnery that only mills yarns of sheep that are uh, on the endangered list. So these are the original sheep um, of Norway. She gave us a wonderful tour of the mill and then we were invited to do some shopping in the store. And I ended up getting a sweater's quantity and I'm just gonna show you the two colors. This is the main color of the sweater. This is Selbu Spinnery Gimre. It's a two ply of Gra, Gro Trundersau, which is a sheep breed. And it's the natural color. And then I got the natural color of a Spale sheep. And I thought that would be really, really pretty for the color work portion. So that's the plan there. The yarn itself is it's a little toothy but it's it's soft it's not prickly at all to the skin and i'm assuming that when you knit it up it will bloom and just oh it's gonna be so gorgeous knit together so that is what i got there that gimre is actually a two-ply wool from the old norse spell saw which is a conservation breed that has roots back to the viking age so it's kind of exciting that i am going to have a sweater's quantity of that the next day we went to a farm the farm is called holmgord and it's run by a really hard-working wonderful lady named gun elland and she has a line of yarn and she does all kinds of things with her sheep. She has the traditional Norwegian sheep as well. When we got there, we took the van there and we had to go up this really big slippery slope and her farm is just this gorgeous sprawling farm. Went in, visited her happy sheep. They were, they were so cute and happy to see us. I've got some pictures of those sheep. And then she also had this really beautiful tiny little cabin that was built for her by I think she said her father-in-law she had all kinds of things in there for us to look at and shop we could go in maybe two or three of us at a time once we were done with the outside tour we ended up going back into her uh, farmhouse and she had her table all uh, laid out for us and chairs and she cooked us an amazing vegetable soup with lots of carrots and parsnips. It was amazing. It tasted so good and it was just such a beautiful, beautiful experience. She let us go upstairs to her loft area, which she had all of her yarns and her work area. And we got to pick out some yarns from her store to purchase. Yeah, let's see, where are her yarns? Mid Norsk gave us a bag for <laughs> all of the goodies that we were getting. I ended up getting Gamel Norsk Spell Saw. I ended up, I wanted to do something with all of the colors of her sheep. So I ended up getting these three colors. There's still a little bit of the sheep grease in these, which makes it so soft when you knit with it. And it smells like sheep. Oh, it smells like her house beautiful and uh, so I started knitting that up into a pair of mittens probably fingerless mitts and I'm just going to create some sort of patterning as I go I also got a skein of her sheep that she hand dyed naturally uh, looks like it's with marigolds or maybe even onion I don't know but I thought that color would go nicely with the three colors that I got. So there they are. Super enlightening um, to be with a shepherd and just see how hard she works to keep her flock and 
you just, again, really understand why for her to survive, she needs to price things the way she needs to price them. I mean, it is so worth it. She also gave us a parting gift. We each got a beautiful box that we opened up and in it was some of her wool. And then one of the items that she creates with her pelts, she's created stamps that she stamps on the, the leather, sews it together, fills it with her uh, wool, the wool that's not able to be spun up, puts it on a leather cord and it's this hanging. And then she even uh, stamps her logo on a uh, piece of wood. And everything she does is just so thoughtful and pretty and just love that. So thank you Gun Olin for an amazing visit to your farm. We felt so welcome and we appreciated it so much. Okay another location we went to. We got in the bus again and we were driving kind of in a neighborhood and all of a sudden there's a farm in the middle of the neighborhood. The farm is run by Jan, Jan Frederick. He is quite the Renaissance guy, let me tell you. This farm, we met the cows and the sheep on the farm. And in fact, when we arrived, his sheep shearer had just arrived an hour ago. I don't think he knew that that was happening that day. He knew we were coming and he had a lot on his plate. Again, another welcoming experience. There we ended up doing a butter tasting. That's what I'm calling it. I don't know if that's what he calls it. But he had butter from his farm, which by the way, is used at some of the best restaurants in Trondheim. He had butter from his farm that he had put in a mold that is a mold that his grandmother used in the 1940s. It was beautiful. It was on a pedestal. We passed it around and slothered our crackers and our breads, which were incredible, by the way. These seedy, crunchy crackers that were homemade and the homemade bread was incredible. The butter was incredible. <laughs> it was such a fun experience. Coffee and tea, of course, we were just so well taken care of. After the butter tour, he shared with us some amazing uh, pieces of antique knitwear that he has, a purple pair of uh, very finely knitted gloves and embroidered gloves that his father, grandfather wore, I think, at his wedding because you had to, at the time, cover your hands when you entered a place of worship. And uh, he also gave us a tour of his amazing house with antiques around every bend. And I took some pictures of some of the antiques that caught my eye. I'll probably include them here. We then entered the kitchen area where he had two spinning wheels and a huge loom. And they were all antique. He shared with us spinning from flax on his wheel. He shared with us... He was spinning actually some of the wool that came right off the sheep that morning. He was spinning in the grease. And then we all kind of begged him to get on his loom, his huge floor loom, and uh, show us a little of that. It was really loud pounding when he was weaving on that. <laughs> Exercise. Beautiful stuff. The guy does everything. <laughs> he, it was such an inspirational place. I ended up, um, yeah, it was such an inspirational morning. And again, just another experience, another great experience. When we got to the retreat, we had uh, a goodie bag that Patricia had put together by very generous people throughout Trondheim. One of the items that we got was this Roros Tweed Sitte Underlog. I don't know if I'm saying it right. The way that we remember to say Sitte Underlog is sitter on a log. Sit on a log, Sitte Underlog. And it's a woolen seating pad. And I'll take it off. This Roros Tweed is so soft. This is in the sit still pattern, or set a still pattern. And it's meant to sit on. And we used these when we uh, had an outdoor luncheon around a fire. We And we used it when we went to Gun Ellen's farm. If you had them, we even could have used them at Jan Frederick's beautiful farm as well. 
So that's the Sitta Undalog, something unique I've never heard of. And um, this is made out of the material that I would love a full blanket in at some point in my life. <laughs> oh, another great item is my Marius mug. Literally, it says Marius on it. Love the orange and the burgundy. And uh, yeah, I, this will be a definite remembrance for me. We also had a soap maker make these wonderful soap on a ropes. They smell incredible. And it just says handmade on it. If I find out the name of the person who, who made these, I will put it down below. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, I also got these. Now I'm just pulling from my goodies bag. I also got these at the Salbu Museum. <laughs> these little minis. Oh, they're so cute. I've hung them from my purse already. Let's see what else is in my goodie bag here. I got more ribbon along the way. I think I will be set for a while with this ribbon. It's very nice, very nice ribbon. And, oh, and then uh, Marete and Yana. They're a podcast that I've watched now for a few weeks that I love and I can't wait for future episodes. They've been doing it some in English so we can understand. <laughs> they made, well, Yana made me this project bag that she uses recycled materials. This, these were a pair of curtains at one point. And Marete shared with me this yarn from Telespin. It is a mohair wool yarn and it's made in Telemark, which is where some of my ancestors are actually from. So I'm going to really look forward to knitting this up probably in some sort of color work mitten or something. Um, so thank you so much to Merite and to Jan, uh, Janne. Love the bag too. And then, I think that's a, I got a lot of other um, wonderful bits and pieces along the way. I could go on for an hour and sharing with you some of the fun stuff that I got, including the Norwegian flag behind you. That was in our welcome packet as well. Oh, one other thing I did want to show you for sure, if I can find the tag. Um, this is a yarn that was in our welcome packet as well. I'm going to open it up so you can see the colors a little bit better. It's that kind of um, turquoisey, icy blue and the black with the rusty spots in there and some gray. It's a sock yarn by Garn, yarn, wait, Garn Boutiquen Fortuna. It means yarn and then it says Garnet Air... Levet's topping, <laughs> which means yarn is the topping of life. And this is a colorway by a local, um, I believe they own a shop and they also dye their own yarn. And this was made specifically for us for the, uh, and it's called Boar's Hog, which is the name of the hotel we stayed at. And this will also be sold at the future festivals that are happening, I think, in August at this particular location. So 75, 25 merino wool, nylon, and that's the colorway Boards Hog. So I will be probably putting that through my sock machine shortly, and uh, I'll share with you that once it's done. Some magical moments along the way on the trip. Everywhere we went, candles were burning. It was dark there, but I wouldn't say it's any darker than Grand Rapids is in the middle of winter. So that didn't bother me at all. Um, the candles were always lit. And the first thing I thought of when I saw the candles when we walked in the hotel lobby was, ah, fire hazard. <laughs> we're really programmed here in the States to worry about liability and lawsuits. And candles just made it so... Uh, it just added so much warmth and hospitality to the whole location. We had candles at breakfast in the morning. <laughs> it was it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Also, a tradition that they have is um, 
at their back doors having knitwear for people to wear when they take off their shoes, their socks available, um, slippers, that kind of thing. And I like that idea of putting a basket by my front door for my guests when they come and take off their shoes so that they can stay warm. And then one of my most favorite moments, I love organ music. I love organs. I, I love... <sighs> I just love to hear organs in cathedrals if I can. And we happened when we went to the Nidaros Cathedral, we happened to be there on a day that the fourth, a fourth grade class was having a field trip there. And it must have been a music class because it was all about the organ. So we got to hear the organ play. That was super cool. And I do have a few clips of the organ playing on my Instagram. And maybe I'll include that at the end as well of this episode. So I think that concludes my Norway trip. It was incredible and I've made friends for a lifetime. It's like it's like when you go to summer camp with 14 of your uh, 14 people you just didn't know all that well you kind of knew who they were but and you leave just with lifelong friends. I feel like we all went through through this amazing experience together and that will bond us forever for sure. So I'm so grateful that I got to go on this trip. Also a special thank you to my family, my husband who held down the fort and my parents who helped out and my kids who did just fine without me. So that is good. That is good that they did just fine without me. I wanna also share with you a couple books that I hauled on the way home in my suitcase because I don't think I'll be able to get these in the U.S. Yes, they're in Norwegian, but a chart's a chart, and once you learn some of the key knitting terminology, you really can can figure it out. I've done that now with the knitting books of the, the Selbu Mitten book, and I've done it with a few other Norwegian books. This is a three series book. This is the third one. Kofte Boken came out. I think it's sweater book. Three is what it means. And there's just, every pattern is amazing. I thought I'd just show you a few of my favorite in the book because I like it when other people do that. I love that sweater. Love that it's two color. And um, I think I would do it in blue and white myself. It's almost like a lacy version, a lacy pattern of the Salbu Star, Salbu Rose. And then what I like about this book is it also shows a cardigan version for every sweater. So you just do the steaking stitches and you can make it into a cardigan. I also, let's see, oh, love this one. I don't know if I love it so much. I mean, I love the pattern, pattern it's fine, but I love the colors. So I might have to use those colors in something in the future. That that green with that pink and yellow in there, I think it just looks so nice. So that's the Kofte Boken 3. And then I had to get Nina's latest book on knitting around Norway. I have the mittens around Norway. This is all different um, types of knitwear. And I've just highlighted a few of my favorites. This happens to be mittens, but I love the bee in there and I love the cuff. Let's see. I thought this was beautiful. I like elements of that one a lot. And I love it in a hat version. Isn't that cute? Ugh. So cute. This one, I saw a lady, I think it was a lady, yeah, I was at the tea. A woman that was at my table was wearing checkered, um, her cuffs were checkered and her collar was checkered too. So I just highlighted that one because I think I need to do something with those checkered, that checkered pattern, which is a very traditional pattern. It's in the uh, mitten book. Love. <laughs> And also love those in the blue. So just a few things from these really incredible Norwegian books. Oh, that was such a fun time. I am glad to be home though. I'm very glad to be home. When Oh, one thing that I was so inspired by during our retreat time, we did have a few hours here and there where we would sit together in this room that was dedicated to our retreat the whole time we were there. And... Um, Sophia Camelborn was with us on the trip and she brought and introduced to us a 
a sewing tool, I guess you'd call it, um, called a marsma. And I think marsma just means maybe sewing tool kit in another language. I'm not sure if it's Swedish, but if you hashtag marsma, M-A-R-S-M-A -S -S on Instagram, you'll see lots of examples of what a marsma was. So Patricia had a bin full of fabrics and felts and trims and I made a marsma and I will show you what my marsma looks like. It is this. <laughs> so basically what it is is at the bottom is some sort of pocket and I used some of her felt and just cut out by hand some hearts and then did some really um, basic blanket stitch around them. She also brought a button jar, so I used some of Patricia's buttons. And she had these fabrics, so I just cut out a template using Sophia's as a, a template. And Patricia had a sewing machine for us to use, so I used a stitch here to sew that on. And I made the binding. Here's the binding I made from some other fabric. And I just made myself a marsma. And Basically, what I'm going to use it for is putting probably my stitching. So I'll put the floss in here. This is actually um, a fleece that the little pieces of floss will stick to. And then up here is where I can pin my, put my pins or I can load my needles up there. And then it's supposed to just roll up. And I have to do some sort of either a ribbon that I can tie or a snap or something, but that's a marsma. So I came home and I was just playing around and decided to use some of my materials. I happened to get this button, if you recall, from the last uh, box from um, Knit Crate. <laughs> And so I will be putting that as a button on this one. But this is my marsma <laughs> that I made since I've been home. You can see how the floss sticks to the fleece. And then I have my big skeins of floss in here. My scissors I tucked in here, but technically I could put my scissors right in there. And I've got my pins loaded up. I used just some heavier fabric that I had at home and I I just stitched an R for Rachel and cut out a bird. And I still need to figure out how I'm, I know I'm going to do the button on here, but the button is not what's going to keep it together. I'll probably do some sort of strap on it. So there is my second Marsma. And while I was doing that, I cut out enough for two more marsmas. <laughs> I'm just really enjoying making these little kits out of some of the scraps, basically, that I have here at home. While I was gone, I got this. This is the very first stitching kit from Fat Quarter Shop. They're doing a, a quarterly stitching kit where they include a pattern, the everything you need to make the pattern and some other little fun tools as well. So this particular quarter's pattern, I thought it would be, a, I've got two big projects going on right now with stitching that are gonna take a long time. And I've never stitched on Ada, I went right to uh, linen. And so this will give me an opportunity to just have some easy stitching in between my big stitches. So this is what the project looks like and it's been finished on there on a board. I think what I'm gonna do is put mine in the center of a wreath that I have that has sunflowers on it for my front door. Easy stitch, and uh, just has four colors. It's The finished size is eight inches by eight inches, just to give you an idea. And I have started it. This is an interesting fabric. It looks like boards which I think is kind of cool. So this is Ada. I've never stitched on Ada. It took me a minute to get used to. I know a lot of people say you should use Ada for the first time, but I fumbled around for a little bit because I was wanting to skip holes, but I've got the H started on that. And here are the colors that came. This is for the sunflower. 
and there are the colors. It also came with the needle. I kind of like this idea, the needle tin. It's got a magnet that keeps your needle from getting lost. And then this interesting tool. I love gadgets for knitting, so this is right up my alley, a cross-stitch key. It's got areas to figure out where from the corner you should start your project, and it, they're holes, so you can actually put your pen in there and make a mark so that you start at the right spot. It has a reference guide for floss strands and what needle size, um, you know, what how many strands you use for each needle typically, which is interesting. And then it also helps you find out the gauge of your cloth. So just like knitting, cloth has a gauge and you count the fibers and it tells you what count linens you're using or what count Ada you're using. So I think this will come in handy. That is the kit. So if you're interested in the kit, go to Fat Quarter Shop. I think they had a few more of these available and you can get your name on the list for the next kit, which I guess will come out maybe summertime. The big project that I'm working on right now, I started, is actually a stitch along by Modern Folk Embroidery. Modern Folk Embroidery is a gentleman who runs it. I can't think of his name offhand. Patrick, maybe? Anyway, he has amazing designs. I'll put a link down below. His designs are kind of a mix of Quaker and Nordic, Scandinavian. Um, you just have to check out his designs. The one that I'm joining in is the 2020 Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along, a family patchwork sampler. And it's here. And what really made me decide to do it is I started it the year that I went to Norway. Look at that selbu rose right at the top of the tree of life. <laughs> There's so many Scandinavian motifs in this one and I also love the fact that I can put my own name at the bottom and then throughout you'll see different initials and I'm going to put my family's initials on there in that middle of the tree of life with the homes. It just spoke to me. So I am doing it on a 36 count platinum Edinburgh linen fabric and I am using Gloriana silks. I thought this would be a great one to use silks on because it's one color and you don't have to buy a lot of different colors. So it's actually pretty cost effective when it comes down to it. So without sharing, get this off, got my needle minder on here and here is my color. I'm doing, that's pretty good. It's a turquoisey blue color. That's my Brady Bunch needle minder because they are America's family, aren't they? <laughs> For my family sampler. But there it is. Just started it, but I wanted to give you an idea. It's going to be a big girl, as they say. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I will be working on this for a while. But I wanted to share with you the start of that. If you want to join in, there's still plenty of time. We just have the first three months, so we get them every month. You just have to buy the pattern and then you get on the list and you get the emails with the downloadable um, pattern. Wow, I have talked a lot here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Treehouse Knits. It's... Uh, it's definitely a doozy. It was such a great trip. And to those of you that I traveled with, I miss you. I love you guys. It was so much fun to be together and get to know all of you. And let's do it again, right? Let's do it again. So that's it for me. We'll see you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye.